What's going on? Welcome to One on One. I'm here with my friend Chris Jericho. I'm here with my best friend Zach Myers. We're now official BFFs. Yeah, yeah. On Twitter last night As we of became last best night, friends. We did. It was official. And that's funny. We were talking social media uh, with the way it is nowadays. When you meet somebody, you start hanging out. Once you start following each other on Twitter, yeah, then it's that's official. when you're officially friends. People were kind of freaking out about that. They were. I was getting a lot of my favorite guitar player. <laughs> yeah, my favorite. Yeah, my, you know. Yeah. I, I was like. <laughs> well, I got a couple favorite singers too. They said you were their favorite. Oh, great! Singers, so. Perfect, man. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. So the, uh, we are going to loosely interview each other. Very loosely. Very. The very thoroughly, you know, too. Loosely. Put on, we're going to put on the interviewing thorough. rubber glove, and we're going to just stick it right in and see what happens. My first question is, if you could describe Chris Jericho in one sentence. Fabulous. <laughs> no, um, probably uh, just driven. Um, I've always had this attitude that. I uh, set a certain goal and go for it, you know, and um, the, the only caveat is the goal has to be something that I feel it's attainable. If I said I'm going to be, you know, the center for the LA Lakers, probably not going to happen. I've been in band since I was 12 and probably started getting into wrestling at the same time. So I always wanted to be in a rock and roll band and I wanted to be a wrestler. Those are the two dreams that I had. And having no idea how to do either one of these things, but also being too stubborn and too stupid and too driven, word of the day, to uh, uh, to accept any substitutes. So that's what it is, driven. You've, you've done both things that you set out to do. And uh, I watched you from when I was younger on wrestling and then I get to hear you guys every day and it's great. And, and I'll say this, the fact that, I know when the Fozzie thing came out, it was kind of like people were going, well is this just a, is sure. this just a vanity project right. that he's doing? And you guys are a fucking great band. Not to say I would have less respect for it if it was a vanity project, but I really appreciated that you came into our world with a, something real and something tangible. So. Well, and, and, that, and I appreciate that, and that's, but that's one of the reasons why this did work because it always has been real. Yeah. Like I said, like for whatever reason, music has always been. You know, I love wrestling. I don't, we talked about. I don't know wrestling trivia. I have no idea. I can discuss music for hours. Yeah. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. What's going on now? I just have always been attracted to music. And when I was 12, like I said, I was in the same bands that you were in, playing yeah. the high school dances, playing the you know the youth youth yeah. clubs, playing the friends parties, jamming with your buds, recording demos. Just oh, you know, the the only difference was for me is that wrestling was also there and kind of took me in a different path. But I still always continued to play music, still always continued to to do demos and all that sort of thing. And you do have to show people that you believe it and that it's real. Yeah. And a, a, a real good analogy I can use is that if you look at 30 Seconds to Mars. Yep. Great band. Unbelievable band. Jared is a great singer, but oh my gosh, what a, he's also an award-winning actor. Yeah. Wow. But people don't look at 30 Seconds as the actor's band. No. They look at it as a band where the guy happens to do something else. And I think with Fozzie, especially the last three or four years, we've really gotten that reputation as well. It's okay, wrestler guy, fine, who cares? The band it, it, it rocks, the songs are, are a killer. And that's, once you can get that vibe on your side, yeah. that's the most important thing, that's all that matters. I was going to ask you, when you uh, joined Shine Down, it was probably four or five years ago? Uh, eight years ago. Eight years ago, but yeah. it wasn't the original line. It wasn't the, the original line. Was it, uh, how was it coming into a band where it was someone else's system, someone else's world? Was it hard to kind of walk that line of having ideas and not proving your metal, but showing that you want to make this your band and not stepping on the toes of the guys that had been there. Was it, was it a little bit of an adjustment period for well, you? Yeah, when I came into this band, it was in, in all actuality kind of a nightmare. And, and it, I can talk about it now in because, and because, because Brent talks about it too. There was a lot of drugs, oh, a lot of drugs. Okay. And, uh, and Brent's almost He's four years, almost five years clean now. Okay. And, and so it was just a bad time. And for me, being a guy who's never done a drug in his life, ever, and, and didn't really drink a lot, I came into this band and I was kind of drinking just to make it through the night. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and to answer your question, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily give my ideas out because there were, there were elements in the band at the time to where that felt that I kind of had the golden ticket. And I was this, this kid who just happened to open this candy wrapper. Not mm -hmm. the fact that I've been doing this since I was 14 years sure. old. Later, you know, when, when the lineup switched completely, when it was just still Brent and Barry, and then we brought Eric in, mm -hmm. then it became that unit. And it's, it's better than it ever has been. It's interesting. 
there's been a lot of guys that get into show business, and I say that as wrestling, I say that as, as music, I say that as anything where you're on the road touring and yeah. traveling. And there's a lot of guys that always say, when I first got into this, I didn't drink, I didn't take any drugs at all, and suddenly they're alcoholics and they're going to rehab. Yeah. You know, being on the road, uh, it can it can chew you up and spit you out. How do you, I'm gonna ask another question yeah. now, how do you stay sane, sober, and, and, and keep your eyes going when you guys are touring constantly? I think that, for me, growing up, I grew up in Memphis, so there was a lot of bands that kind of were in the 90s, like uh, Roxy Blue, Tora Tora, uh, Saliva. Dude, I yeah. loved Roxy oh, Blue. Oh, dude, yeah, Todd Poole and all those guys. Todd who Poole, I still know. Right. I still know all those guys. Wow. And I kind of saw their this, you know what I mean, because of drugs. And now all those guys are doing great, and, and they're, they have families, and they're healthy. And I think that was just what, for me, what kind of made me want to stay away from it. I, I definitely love girls mm -hmm. at a very early age right. and, that, and that kind of shined through but that was just I think learning from other experiences and watching other people was and, what it was for me and times have changed too it's like even from guys in wrestling too like in the 80s it seemed like you know the decade of excess yeah, yeah. Those, those guys were all insane they're all all hopped up and but in this day and age it's really not as cool or as prevalent to be like that I love the guys that I love the people who come backstage or like happen to get a pass or something they're like Where's the party at, bro? And we're like, you know, all of us, we're sitting around talking about books. And I like, know, you know what I mean? Know, like, right? They're like, oh man, this isn't rock and roll. I know. If you could have a movie about your life made, who would you want to direct it? What would it be called? And who would you want to play Chris Jericho? <laughs> it's funny, uh, I put out two, two books, New York Times Best yeah. books. And after the first one, I got that question all the time Who would you have play you? I always say Jonah Hill. And that's when it was really, you know, important. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's rad. But, um, well, a director. I mean, dude, that's. I love the Cohen brothers. Uh, I think that they can make any story interesting. Um, I also love Clint Eastwood too. He I think is, Clint Eastwood is a fantastic. Could director. be my favorite director. You know, um, and as far as what would it be called, uh, A Lion's Tale. That was my first book. That's kind of because I used to be the Lionheart. Yeah. When I started going through Europe and Japan, all the early days. And as far as who would play me, that's an interesting question because, like, you know. Do you pick somebody that's like really dashing, like a Brad Pitt, or do you pick someone that's just like a real killer actor that can maybe envelop my personality? Uh, why don't we say Jared Leto and go back go. to what we were talking about earlier? There you go. Or Jesse Eisenberg, he's funny too. I love Jesse Eisenberg he's, too. He's, he's I don't really know if he could pull you off though. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. So okay, let me ask you this then. If you were in a movie, and it's a buddy comedy, All right. who would play you, who plays your best friend, and uh, what is it called? <laughs> um, for me, I, here's the thing. For me, I would probably have to say Jesse Eisenberg as well. Ah. Or or Michael Sarah, who's equally, they look and exactly alike. they're almost the same guy. They're almost the same guy. And I almost would want to see the two of them together. together. So I'm going to say I'm gonna say either Michael Sarah or Jesse Eisenberg for me. And Thank I would you. have to do Jonah Hill just because comedically, he's my favorite actor right now. So I would say Jesse Eisenberg for me, uh, Jonah Hill for... I'll, I'm gonna do Michael Sarah. Okay, since you just, did Jesse Eisenberg, Michael we got, Sarah. We're already giving Jesse some work. Yep. Let's give Michael some work. Right, we're gonna get, do Jonah Hill, and then um, and what are we gonna call it? Man, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna have to say uh, Evansville and Allentown. Evansville. And Allentown. <laughs> that actually may work. <laughs> yeah, um, it might work. Um, I don't know. I can't answer that. All right. Well, for I, now, I, I, for I, now, I, the working title is Evansville title. and Allentown. Ev Evansville and Allentown. As movies do for all you non-Hollywood types. All Obviously, right. we're very Hollywood. Very. When movies are being made, sometimes they have working titles, so they didn't know. What was the working title for Star Wars? Do you know? I do not know. Blue Harvest. Really? Yes. I actually did hear that. And that's why, if you watch Family Guy, they did a Star Wars parody, and it was yeah. called Blue Harvest. That's why. All right. Well, if you were if you were a horror character, because you said you like horror movies as well, big time. Which horror character w w encompasses you more, attitude wise? I always loved uh, Evil Dead movies. And yeah. I always loved Ash, the yeah. character of, of Bruce Campbell played Ash, to the point that my son's name is Ash, which I fooled my wife into telling her, um, you know, uh, I think Ash should be a great name for for a boy. I love it. And then after he was born, I told her, you know, I got that name from Evil Dead. So. Um, I, I just always loved the fact that he was in way over his head. Yeah. He was always like, you know, a pipe would open and blood would just pour on him. And then like one of the zombie things would get killed and would just like hit him in the face with gore. He was just always covered. But he always was able to pull it out by, by, this, by the seat of his pants, you know. Yeah. 
And there was actually rumors going around that there was going to be Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. See, I think that would be cool. And I, what I liked about Ash was it was the realisticness almost yeah. of the character comparatively to other characters. He's just kind of like every man that was yeah. kind of thrown into this sort of thing, you know? Maria asked me this, and I thought it was a great question. What is your weapon of choice in a zombie apocalypse, and where would you take shelter? Well, this is an interesting uh, interesting question. I have actually interesting answers. Scott Ian uh, uh, tipped me off on this. There's actually a zombie-proof house that you can buy online. So if, you are, if you're watching at home, which I would assume you, you are. You know I'm going to look this up as I'm soon as this you, is over. I'm telling you, Zach. You go online and, and Google zombie house, and there's this house that exists. It's like, um, it's an open type of a thing, and then there's like, you know, uh, there's like a, a, a pool, and there's a moat, and there's a bridge, but you can also push a button, and it all closes up into one giant box. That's With awesome. Any, yeah, there's, there's no windows, there's no footholds, and then it opens up when the zombies are gone. So I would seek refuge at the in the zombie, zombie house. house. Uh, I think you're probably best off with some kind of semi-automatic machine gun. Yeah. You know, pistols are, look cool, but you just want to be able to just, just raise them to the ground. You have to pepper them across. What do you collect? I, I, I'm a, I love shoes. Like, I love <laughs> Nikes. So like, I collect sneakers. I'm a big okay. sneaker, and I love watches. So what is like, what is your old lady like, what is she sick of that you bring home? Um, first of all, watches, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin calls them biscuits. All right. Have you heard that term before? I have not. That's a nice biscuit you got there, kid. So uh, if you ever heard the term biscuit, I will. I will know. to your watch. I collect probably, uh, I still collect CDs. I have thousands and thousands and thousands. And even when I buy, actually when I bought Amaryllis, I bought it on iTunes to have it. Yeah. Then went out and bought it again yeah. on CD just because just from that age where I just like having it in my hand. We're all the same way in our You know what I mean? Yeah, you put it up. And I think rock fans still buy yeah, CDs. I agree. Maybe the top 40 fans don't do it as much because it's all but one or two yeah. songs. Whereas real fans of your band want to hear track one through 10. So I like collecting those. And also there's this really uh, cool place in Japan called Ayres, A-Y-R-E-S. And they have the greatest collection of live concert bootleg DVDs. See, I would, I would fall in love with that Dude, place. And, and the thing is, it's so cool that all of us bands, yeah. you know, if you went there too, you don't mind. Yeah. Like you're not there to hunt them down because you, if, if you know Shine Down walk in, yeah. Zach Myers from Shine Down walks in, it's gonna be like, okay, here's all the Shine Down stuff, but what do you want? Um, yeah. This, this, this. this. What would you ask? What would, would you, what would you, you take? You two. You two stuff. You two Foo Fighters. Okay. Um, I love old Beatles bootlegs because there's no PA. You know, the PA is this big, and, and they're playing. You know, the Shea playing Stadium. Shea Stadium. I was just going to say that. Beatles are my favorite band yeah. of all time. I went into Aeros, her name is Junko. I said, Junko, what do you have? Do you have any Beatles stuff? She goes, uh, yeah. Whole shelf of all this stuff where I have, like, you know, uh, Sweden TV, 1963, yeah. uh, Washington, 19. Like, where does this stuff come from? And there's a Shea Stadium bootleg from that show. Wow. The entire concert. And they're playing through the house PA. Yeah. Like, now batting number 14, Lou yeah. Gehrig, Gehrig. And yeah. that's what they're playing through. And, um, the other one is Washington, where they play to this half of the crowd, and then halfway through the set, 15 minutes in, because they only played yeah, 30 yeah. minutes, they had to switch their mics from this side of the stage to this side, turn the drum riser around to, to uh, entertain these side. That's so great. And though. they had no roadies. They did it they themselves. They did it themselves. Beatlemania, full force, 1964, and Ring goes down on the ground, going, eh, 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 turning the thing, and Paul picks up his mic and puts it down with George and John, and it's like, I can't believe well, you see all those Our videos. You see all those videos of them changing their own strings or those pictures. I all love this. Have you been in Japan with Shine Down? I have not. Okay, well, when you guys go, you have to go to Ayers in Tokyo. We will. It's, it, you will freak out, man. It's so cool. My last full question, because I do also do like a little speed round thing. My sure. last full question is, what career would you choose if neither of those were in in the, you know, not if like this. Be, the, yeah, you yeah, couldn't yeah. do these anymore neither from birth. One. Yeah, um, I went to college to, to be a, a journalist because you had to be 18 to go into wrestling school and I was 17 when I graduated from high school so I had like a little bit of a time frame so I went to college for two years, got my journalism degree. But even when I was working you know, for, for the Winnipeg Free Press or the Winnipeg Sun, I didn't, like I realized that I would rather have people writing stories yeah. about me than writing about stuff. Maybe being a writer of, of fiction or some kind of novels, but it would have to be some kind of entertainment thing. Maybe yeah. I would have went into acting or maybe some kind of broadcasting 
you know, uh, news broadcaster, yeah. CNN uh, on the spot report from you know the war in Abu yeah. Dhabi or something like that. It would have to have some kind of an adventure and some kind of show business element to it. As we talked about earlier, I think you would even your questions off of this. Uh, the last time I did this, I had questions, and this time we we didn't write anything just, down. Just talking, right? And and that that's that's kind of shows your 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 worth as 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 being a journalist or something like that. I think you could you could totally pull that you off. You want to so. be inquisitive, you know, but also make it entertaining. Like you have to. I just feel that inside of me of just being like a an entertainer in yeah. one way, shape, or form. You know, maybe doing local uh, dinner theater. Yeah, <laughs> with <laughs> Joyce DeWitt from the Three Company. And Chris <laughs> <laughs> Last Go question ahead. I want to ask you. I'm sure maybe people asked you before, but I, I see your your work and it's amazing. Yeah. But I keep seeing. This is obviously uh, Mario Luigi. Yeah. What is this guy here? I want to know what that is. Right, this is a uh, from here down is '90s Nintendo. Okay. So it's the controller. Okay, right. This is Paperboy. Uh-huh. Ah! Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Oh, man. Remember they all had character yeah, names too, right? Yeah, uh, like Glass Joe and yeah. Piston Honda <laughs> yeah. and uh, Kung Fu. Uh -huh. Logan, where you're just walking down the... Yep. Um, skate or show? Die. Oh, man. That's the old cool. skateboard. I was a skateboarder kid. Oh, were you? Yeah. Long hair. And oh, everything. okay. So, and this is Mega Man. <laughs> like Excite Bike. So, <laughs> so like yeah. Right. This is... this. That's it. My speed around. Oh, good. There's more. Right. Cool. What's your favorite word? Lugubrious. All right. Any reason? It's just a fun word to say. Say it with me now. Lugubrious. lugubrious. I like that. Yeah, it means kind of melancholy, so I'm rarely lugubrious, but when I am, I'm sitting now I'm feeling lugubrious, real lugubrious, lugubrious, lugubrious a lot. today. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite curse word? I think that fuckface always gets a laugh from me. How are you doing, fuckface? You know, I, I just like that. I like that. But yeah, just the combination of, of the fuck and the actual face together creates a whole uh, a syrupy nugget that tastes good on the soul. In one word, when, when you leave Earth, what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, a great father. Um, so I messed that one word, but... Uh, well, you can do, we can do a sentence. Uh, dad. I, I want to be remembered. It's by good that that comes a great dad. Yeah. Uh, and, and secondly, just some uh, entertainer. Oh, I, you, you've already encompassed that. Oh. <laughs> um, if you do believe in God, when you in heaven and all that, when you, what, what is the first thing you want to hear him say? Good job, job well done, son. Awesome, um, Chris Jericho. Absolutely. Let me ask you. Can I? Yeah, ask you a of course. Questions? Go ahead. Okay. Um, these might be a little bit more stock, but just out of curiosity, yeah. favorite guitar player? The Edge. Cool. Favorite U two song? With or without you. Ah. Favorite Shine Down song at this moment? At the as of this moment? Shed some light. Okay. Uh, favorite cities to play in? Kansas City, Detroit, Houston, Sydney, Australia. Wow, we love Sydney too. Uh, okay, uh, favorite fruit? Peaches. Favorite color? Purple. And favorite Elvis song? Um, Fools Rush In. Chris Jericho. Zach Myers. Thank you, brother. Thank you very this much. Been, this has been a blast. Very, very. This is at least the second best one you've ever done. <laughs> For sure. For Absolutely. sure. At the very least.